بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Entitled High Performance of Commercial Solar Cells Stacked by Crystalline PN Silicon Nanowires Uh, this paper uh, is uh, published is to be published by under the names of Lutfiya Nadi, Muhammad Azat, and Yahya Ismail. Lutfiya Nadi works at the Faculty of Science Physics Department in the Laser Lab, and uh, uh, also at the International Center of Scientific Studies for, for Ultrafast Lasers at the uh, Niles. At Cairo University, uh, Professor Yahya Ismail works at the Center of Nanoelectronics and Devices at Zuel City for Science and Technology, and Mohammed Azad works at the Laser Center at Bani Suef University in Bani Suef. Uh, I think that it would be very interesting if I can give you an idea about my group and about when did I start to do nanotechnology. I really did start that uh, in 2006 by preparing uh, gallium nitride nanostructures by laser ablation of gallium metal, just without any liquid or anything. In 2006, we also grew structure of metal oxides by laser ablation and silica-assisted thermal evaporation. As a published work, formation of nanowires by laser ablation of graphite was in 2006 as well. Uh, 2008, we started to to make structural and optical properties of the gallium uh, oxide nanodots grown by silicon oxide assisted evaporation. Uh, in 2011, we did work on optical properties of gallium oxide nanostructures. And uh, in 2011, we did work on gallium nitride nanostructures by laser ablation or of metallic gallium. Then we uh, really introduced the new uh, work on uh, liquid phase pulsed laser ablation work. We started this work in 2010 by preparing rare earth doped and undoped gallium nitride nanocrystallites through liquid phase pulsed laser ablation. And uh, we did uh, other work at uh, Georgia Tech Institute together with Professor Mustafa El Sayed and uh, Samah. And that was on energy transfer efficiency in europium doped zinc uh, oxide thin films. And this has been published at uh, uh, the Applied Materials and Interfaces, which is uh, published by the American Chemical Society. Uh, then we started to do work on silicon nanocrystallites we were so interested in silicon being uh, uh, being, as you know, uh, most important in uh, solar cells. Silicon nanocrystallites prepared by nanosecond laser ablation of silicon wafers in water. Uh, that was started in 2013, was finished then. And uh, we did some other published work, uh, structural and optical properties of nanosilicon fabricated by liquid phase pulsed laser ablation uh, method in 2014. In 2014 also, we did some work for the titanium oxide nanoparticles 
uh, applied to antimicrobial self-cleaning surfaces. And uh, we did prepare nanosilver uh, by liquid pulse laser ablation applied to textile industry in 2014. In 2015, we did uh, some uh, um, research work on photoluminescence properties of undoped and doped thin film films grown by radiofrequency sputtering on sapphire uh, substrates applied to surface science. Then we turn to be more interested on uh, PN silicon nanowires conversion efficiency, which has been read at the Dubai conference in 2018. Now we uh, so we'll start with the paper uh, for this uh, conference. The abstract is uh, simply uh, uh, written here. Uh, since more than 20 years, silicon solar cells is dominating the world market. But the power conversion, in spite of world active efforts, is still around 23 to 25%. And this is the efficiency. Some people claim that they have gone beyond that, but this is the, 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 the silicon solar cells that is on the world market nowadays. Our group, in an attempt to improve the efficiency, decided to fabricate a device by simply stacking crystalline PN silicon nanowires on top of a conventional silicon solar cells. Because of course, we thought that such a very widely used silicon solar cell industry now is not just going to, to replenish that and replace it by another material. So we decided that we would keep the same uh, solar cells, the conventional solar cells on the market as it is, but try to uh, to add to it something else that would increase its efficiency. By forming nanowires, we uh, prepared these nanowires applying the liquid phase pulsed laser ablation method. Uh, and these samples of the PN silicon wafers immersed in double distilled water were subjected to different number of nanosecond UV laser pulses from uh, nitrogen laser uh, of time duration 15 nanoseconds, having energy of 375 millijoule per pulse. The wires were characterized using high resolution electron microscope uh, and Joule 2100 uh, transmission electron microscope and the, and the uh, whether it's crystalline or not, we really use the electron diffraction method. The optical properties of the different prepared samples were measured, showing higher spectral absorption for the nanowires prepared by 400 laser pulses, forming sizes of mean length between 15.13 to 15 uh, plus or minus 0.15 nanometer and mean width of uh, 1.64 plus or minus 0.15 nanometer of nanowire density 10 to 13 per centimeter square. They also showed a relative blue shift peaking at uh, 410.5 plus or minus 30.6 nanometer uh, the photoluminescence spectra provided the highest photoluminescence peak at uh, 657.15 plus or minus 2.2 nanometer for photo excitation at 491.3 plus or minus 0.15 nanometer from the argon laser. Such optical properties suggested suitable optical properties of the nanowires to absorb solar spectra that is not utilized by the, by the 
conventional solar cell and provide suitable and higher efficiency photons to be absorbed by the conventional solar cell in addition to the transmitted solar spectrum. So in this case, we are amplifying the use of the spectral range and the performance of the stack device was determined by comparing the IV characteristics of the combined uh, solar cell with and without the stacked P and silicon crystalline uh, structures, nanostructures. And we found that the efficiencies uh, varied between 4 and 18.8% uh, were, de and were, were detected, and the efficiency is for the P and silicon nanowires prepared by 400 uh, laser pulses. As an introduction to the work, we are going to give you an idea about what is really happening since the history of silicon solar cells was known. The evolution of crystalline and multi-crystalline silicon solar cell efficiency is a, an old field of uh, physics and industry. And this, uh, this curve shows crystalline P and silicon solar cells since 1940, where it was very low efficiency. And then in 1980, it started to increase to be the crystalline to be in the order of 18%. And uh, then it uh, overcome that and uh, in uh, year 2015 uh, it raised to uh, 25 percent as reported in uh, in literature the multi-crystalline uh, p and silicon uh, is uh, the lower curve and as you see, uh, the multicrystalline is having less efficiency than the crystalline P and silicon. This uh, up till uh, 2015. Now we can describe in a very uh, confined manner, the description of the commercial solar cells available uh, in, a, in a work that has been published in 2009. So as you see, uh, the, the efficiency curve, uh, corrected efficiency percent, uh, started in uh, the year 75 was approximately 9%. And in the year 2004, it went up to 20.4%. And the uh, cell description is, uh, uh, is, is the last column in which we have the uh, industrial uh, production uh, uh, companies where SolarX and uh, Georgia Tech uh, uh, produced most of them. As you see, the, 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 the reported efficiency was raised from 75, from the year 1975, 10% to 20.3% in the year 2004, and to 25% nowadays. Now, the, the, there are three types uh, of solar cells that uh, is been uh, introduced into uh, industry. The first one that started uh, as crystalline silicon cells uh, was really starting uh, from the 
for efficiencies did not exceed 20%. Then uh, the price per watt was uh, around 50 US dollars per watt. Uh, as you see uh, on the lower part, uh, the green crystalline silicon cells is uh, illustrated. Then came the semiconductor uh, thin film technologies that started, uh, of course, to, uh, to over exceed all other types uh, using thin film technologies, silicon, uh, MC silicon, that is the CIGS, uh, copper indium selenide uh, cells with uh, yellow color that became cheaper as well. And uh, <clears throat> then uh, new generation concepts, third generation cells in the red color, uh, as you see, is uh, now uh, predominating uh, most of the solar cells <clears throat> on the market. And it is, uh, it cost uh, between uh, $0.2 per watt to $0.1 per watt. While when it started, it was $53.5 uh, per watt. So it is becoming cheaper. Another type which is now prevailing is the radial junction silicon nanowire technology. Here they, they use the nanowires technology in a radial junction, silicon nanowire as clear from uh, the figure. This is a low cost and, the, uh, uh, and uh, the substrates are low cost and conformable substrates, uh, makes it more prevailing in the market. But still it, uh, it is not exceeding 25% efficiency conversion. So high efficiency of 15% enhanced the optical absorption of silicon nanowire arrays and then effective extraction of photogenerated charges in the radial junction configuration. Low cost one, low silicon material usage and uh, the substrates are metal substrates. Uh, Lee et al. The 19, in 2010 and 12 uh, estimated the advantage of silicon nanowires and they uh, uh, pointed that there would be an enhanced optical absorption for the silicon uh, nanowires. Uh, so the light would uh, pass the solar light would pass through the incident light like uh, through the rods like uh, on the right hand side of the figure and the curve for silicon nanowire array periodicity uh, uh, as a function of uh, uh, ultimate efficiency uh, is seen on the right side with uh, an increase up to 24%. And in this case, the, the silicon film was 5,000 nanometer. The, the silicon array was uh, clear given, given in the uh, black points. Uh, the efficiency is given in the black points. And uh, it shows how the silicon nanowire array periodicity uh, at the bottom for, uh, varies from 200 nanometers to 1,400 nanometers. So uh, we can conclude from this that uh, silicon nanowire arrays with optimized periodicity offer an enhancement of absorption compared to silicon thin films with the same thickness. Uh, silicon nanowire arrays would allow to reach higher ultimate values, reducing silicon material uses. 
So putting that in mind, we started to, to think about our work. We started to think about uh, preparing uh, silicon nanowires. The experimental setup used is uh, a nitrogen laser, uh, as seen on the right hand side. Uh, the nitrogen laser produces UV laser light. And then we put the samples of the PN silicon uh, into um, into water, distilled water, and focus this laser light, the X-ray laser light from the uh, nitrogen laser onto uh, the PN silicon uh, sheets in a quartz cell in water, immersed in water. Uh, this experimental uh, shows the high-powered UV laser in our laboratory. And, uh, this is Muhammad Aizat and Muhammad Fikri, uh, students. Now Muhammad Fikri is a, a staff member. And uh, this is the, the, the nitrogen laser uh, is extended, as you see. And, and the laser uh, beam is uh, focused onto the, the laser cell, including the silicon PN sheets. After that, the uh, samples of the silicon PN sheets taken from the after bombardment with the UV laser. So the UV laser is the uh, laser pulse, the pulsed laser, and the, uh, the LP, that is the liquid phase, is uh, distilled water in this case. Then uh, we, we checked the photoluminescence of the silicon PN uh, crystals formed into the water by a, a conventional photoluminescence system uh, where we can determine the spectrum of the silicon nanocrystals. Uh, and also we can take samples to uh, uh, identify by the high resolution electron microscope for uh, the number and the shape of the particles and uh, also for determining the uh, specifications of the uh, of the rods formed whether they are formed or not so this is the results of uh, our results. Uh, I will show only three types uh, which has been recorded uh, uh, according to uh, the PN silicon nanowires, uh, high resolution transmission electron microscopy, uh, to count the number of particles formed. And uh, the electron diffraction electron microscopy to determine whether they are crystalline or not. And uh, we used, of course, the UV laser, uh, nitrogen laser, with the wavelength 337 uh, nanometer to ablate the silicon PN uh, uh, sheets. So for these conditions, we found that the distribution of the, of the size of the of the rods varies from uh, mean diameter varies from 0 0.85 to 1.2 nanometer with a peaking at uh, the value of uh, uh, 1.04 nanometer that's a mean diameter form for uh, 
number of uh, of, of particles, uh, number of uh, particles uh, against the mean diameter. As you see, it is peaking at uh, 1.04 nanometer. This is the electron diffraction spectrum, which uh, confirms the crystalline structure form. And this is the, uh, the, the electron high resolution electron microscope to, to see the, uh, to count the number formed and the per centimeter square. As you see, uh, we have the scale into 20 nanometer size. And as you see, they are so parallel to each other. On the, on the right hand side, the uh, figure. And the results of this indicates that we, with the laser, uh, UV laser 337 nanometer, uh, the energy of per pulse from the laser to ablate the PN silicon sheet was 375 millijoule, and the pulse duration was 15 nanoseconds. Uh, nanowire density was found to be 5 times 10 to 12 uh, wires per centimeter square, and we get uh, uh, the mean length to be of 56.22 nanometer with diameter. 0.3 nanometer. This is the, the other uh, case where we uh, utilized the higher number of shots, 400 shots. The particles increased, the, si the size, the mean diameter of the particles increased, and the mean number of particles also increased. And the crystallinity was also existing using the electron diffraction method. And the, the shape of the, of the parallel wires uh, are so clear on the right hand side with 20 nanometer diameter. So this is uh, the outcome of uh, using the, these conditions that we can get a nanowire density of 10 to 13 per centimeter square that is increased than the first one and the mean diameter uh, was uh, 1.65 and the mean length was 15.13 nanometer. This, uh, as we increase the number of shots of the laser, we increased also the number of uh, PN uh, silicon wires produced with uh, the increase of the diameter to reach 5.76 nanometer. Uh, and the number of particles, as you see, increased to uh, due to the increase of the uh, power density of the laser. And it peaks at uh, 4.5, uh, 5.76 nanometer. This gives the mean diameter. So, but it was found to be not parallel and uh, the, the rods formed were uh, uh, haphazardly dis uh, distributed in the uh, in the sample, uh, but it kept uh, the electron diffraction uh, shows that it kept the uh, crystalline structure. So in this case, we have uh, we, we we did uh, produce uh, for 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 irradiation of 15 nanoseconds. We produced uh, nanowire density uh, of uh, 5, 10 to 10, and uh, the mean diameter was uh, 5.76 nanometer, and the mean length was 140.83 nanometers. Then we uh, made uh, optical uh, 
absorption uh, to see uh, whether the range of solar uh, uh, spectrum will uh, affect the absorption uh, and uh, will be absorbed into these different uh, uh, samples. And we found that uh, as the sample size uh, decreases, they increased, then from 50 to 400, we found that the optical absorption increased from 0.56 on the average in the range from 400 to 800 and it increased up to uh, uh, from 0.8 to 0.8 from 0.56 to 0.8 that is increased uh, in all the region. So this uh, is the optical properties, normalized absorption spectra for the PN silicon nanowire samples prepared. So the photoluminescence of the samples at 657.15 plus or minus 2.2 nanometer when excited by argon laser line of uh, lambda 438 was found to photoluminous on absorption of a, of a wavelength 657, that is at the, 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 at the range where the conventional solar cells are actually not responding. So if we utilize this photoluminescence of the samples we prepared to be added up to the conventional solar cells, then of course we this means that we are adding extra amplification of the of the so solar energy arri arri arriving to the conventional solar cell. So we also measured the IV curves after treating the samples by ultrasonic shakers. Equal number of drops were placed on a glass slide by the fine needle and then covered by thin microscope plate. And we get the IV characteristics of the conventional solar cell were measured with and without adding the samples, we pre the nano samples we prepared uh, previously. This shows the very simple IV circuit and uh, shows also how we uh, prepared the PN nanowire uh, samples uh, where we used uh, uh, drops of the prepared uh, nano P and silicon between uh, the plate, the, a plate and a, a cover of a microscope. And we, uh, on the right hand side, as you see, we have the conventional solar cell. And we have uh, measured the IV characteristic without introducing the PN silicon wires and by introducing the PN silicon wires. And uh, we excited the silicon, the PN silicon system. This is a conventional solar cell. And this is on the right side, the PN silicon nanowires prepared uh, by the previous methods. And uh, we use the solar simulator. We measure the IV characteristics by of the conventional solar cell with and without the PN silicon nanowires. And we found uh, that uh, the efficiency increased all the time with all the samples. But of course, uh, we see that uh, uh, with the samples uh, that has been prepared at 18.8%, 8 
the efficiency increased uh, to 24 uh, percent. That's to say it became uh, 24 percent than uh, 25 uh, so that we reach a 30 percent increase of efficiency. We can say the results achieved indicate that the PN silicon nanowires obtained by the liquid phase pulsed laser ablation of PN silicon wafers in double distilled water by UV laser showed increased cell efficiency, varying from 4% to 18.8% by stacking the silicon nanowires above the conventional solar cell as illustrated in slide 25. The highest efficiency was obtained for PN silicon nanowires ablated at 400 laser pulses, distinguished by nearly parallel geometry as well as small spread in dimensions of the highest nanowire crystal uh, density. Added to its optical properties that indicated highest optical absorption for photons in the range of the solar spectrum, high photoluminescence peaking in the spectral range of the conventional silicon solar cells. And uh, this would be our uh, successful uh, utilization of the conventional cells uh, that is existing on the market nowadays with adding the new nano structures we prepared by the liquid phase laser ablation technique. Of course, all of these works were motivated by Professor Mustafa Said, who is, of course, our uh, motivating, uh, we can say motivating agent in all our work. And uh, he is uh, always keeping in touch with uh, all Egyptians in several fields. Uh, my research group uh, is formed of Mohammed Aizat. Uh, he is a MSc student. He is now in uh, Korea working for his PhD. And uh, Mr. Ibrahim Arzu from the, uh, from the industrial uh, industry of solar cells uh, company uh, made by the uh, uh, by the uh, Egyptian uh, Ministry of uh, uh, the Egyptian Ministry where Dr. Yahya Smail from uh, the University of Zuel, uh, Habib from uh, Niles, Abdel Adder from Niles, and my colleagues, uh, Professor uh, Magdi Omar, uh, Professor Galila Abdel Latif, and Professor Hussein Abdel Menam uh, are supervisors with me in most of the research we are carrying out. I really do thank you for your patience. And if you have any questions, I would be very happy to answer it.